I'm Martin Kerr. I'm a singer-songwriter originally from England, now living in Canada. I'm a Baha'i and I take a lot of inspiration from the Baha'i teachings in my songwriting and in the way that I, I do my, <laughs> my music and my business. I think being a Baha'i has given me a distinct motivation to uplift and inspire through music and to communicate ideas that can be useful to people. Uh, and sometimes that's through exploring grief or exploring conflict and unity. Um, sometimes it's just good old fashioned love songs, but even on the darker songs, I like there to be a chink of light, a, a glimmer of hope. And the idea that music is a ladder for the soul is always kind of at the back of my mind that I want people to feel uplifted at the end of one of my shows and to feel a bit more hope than they came in with. Music has a natural power to bring people together and to break down barriers. You see people of different ages and backgrounds and languages and religions at the same concert together. And when you sing a song together, even just hearing a song, but especially when the crowd participates, um, there is a visceral, real sense of unity. We're actually doing something together, experiencing the same emotions at the same time, following the same story and the same melody. And that's, to me, a very powerful thing. And I think people do leave the concert feeling more united. Uh, the songs that I sing, many of them are quite joyful, although we do explore some, some sadness and grief as well. And that's important for people too, to really explore the depths of human emotion in a profound and beautiful way. I think leaves people with a sense of hope. I love that quote from Khalil Gibran. The deeper sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. So I like to give people both extremes at one of my shows or on one of my albums. I really want to make them cry and then make them laugh and sing and clap and feel joyful um, because we need both. Music to me is a universal language and even if people don't understand the lyrics, they can be affected by the emotion that they're experiencing through the song. And music's done so much good for me. It's, it's connected me to other people around the world as a listener and as a performer. And so I want to provide that sense of connection to other people. It helps, it helps people to feel heard, to feel that they're not alone um, when they hear their own story or their own feelings in someone else's song. It's a tool for, for that kind of validation and connection, but of course for, for creating joy and hope and vision. So there's some very inspiring visionary concepts in the Baha'i faith. The idea that, that humanity is one family is a very revolutionary idea. Um, the idea that our lives are fundamentally spiritual and our, and our, our purpose is to serve each other and to grow in our spiritual virtues. These, these are revolutionary ideas and you have to deliver them quite subtly, one thing at a time, um, and doing it through metaphors and stories uh, allows people to really receive those and feel inspired by them rather than um, threatened by them. I recently released a song called Blissful Lands, which is about looking forward to the next world. And that's a concept from the Baha'i Faith, the idea that we could look forward to the, to the end of this life and the beginning of the next with hope and joy and anticipation. It's a, it's a concept that is not very current <laughs> and quite revolutionary and beautiful. Um, and I'd always wanted to put that idea into a song and one day it came to me this concept of heading for the blissful lands. I, I haven't heard that phrase in particular used in the Baha'i writings, but it came to me one day and uh, it became very poignant because a good friend of mine was struggling with cancer and passed away just a few months ago. And I sang it at her funeral and it's become very meaningful to a lot of people. The more I've sung it, the more people have connected with that and said, I really needed to hear that right now because someone I love just passed and I've been struggling with it. And I think that's something that is really important to bring ideas that people really need but are not hearing in popular culture. Um, and sometimes you can be surprised by the results. I am.
I would say there's many ways to have a career in music or in the arts, and each of us needs to find our own path. It can be very challenging. A lot of people will discourage you from pursuing it, saying that it's too risky or too immoral. <laughs> and uh, they don't actually know what they're talking about. You know, there are risks and rewards to every career path. And if you really feel that you have a gift to share or a mission to complete or something that you passionately want to do with your life, that's the most important thing that can drive you to success, both in terms of supporting yourself and, uh, and others from your craft and in terms of serving humanity and making a difference in the world. So that would be my primary advice is to, to really follow your passion and not be discouraged by your failures or by what other people say. It's really a learning process and it's been good for me to remind myself over the years that any small business, and that's what I am, takes a while to get off the ground. It takes a great deal of self-belief and perseverance and in the first couple of years you probably won't make any returns. You'll see a lot of investment and after a few years you might start to see returns both financially and spiritually in terms of the impact that you're having on people around you. My version of a music career looks quite different from how people might imagine it or how many other people do a music career. And that's been partly by design and partly figuring out along the way. When I first started, I tried to kind of tread the boards that I was told to tread, which was playing a bar, late on a Thursday night, putting up posters around town and getting people to come out. And very quickly I realized that wasn't going to work for me. Um, firstly, it wasn't financially sustainable. And secondly, it was very intertwined with the alcohol industry, which is something I'm not comfortable with supporting directly as a Baha'i artist. I really wanted to kind of break that connection, partly for my personal beliefs, but also because I really want to connect with all kinds of people. And there's quite a small demographic actually that wants to hang out in bars, but everybody loves music, all ages, all backgrounds. So I wanted to try and serve all those people that were not being served by that kind of music industry. So I took my, my music to them in different places and different ways. Um, a big part of that was street performing, playing at farmers markets, and also playing at schools and places of worship of all different faiths. It's been really nice to kind of carve my own path. And I think um, everybody's kind of figuring it out anew at the moment. The music industry has changed so much in the last few years. Um, you do really have to kind of make it up as you go along. But if you have a clear vision as to what you want to achieve, what you are and aren't willing to do, it makes those choices a lot easier. They're not always easy, but at least you can, <laughs> you have a framework for making them. I'm lucky enough to get a lot of confirmation in my work. Um, every time that I sing in public, I see the effect that it has on people's emotions. I see their faces light up or their tears go down their face and people come up to me after the show and give me hugs and high fives and, and cheer. So it's, it's a very natural process of, of kind of receiving that energy back that I'm putting out. So I love performing live for that reason and I do it as much as I possibly can. When it comes to releasing music, sometimes it can be a, a bit more nerve wracking to me actually, maybe just because I've done it less. But I do get lovely messages through social media and email of people who've heard a song and telling me how much it touched their heart or made their day or changed their life sometimes or got them through a really hard time. So those are the kind of confirmations I really appreciate, personal messages and, and words from people about how a song or a performance has, has changed things for them. Humility is a concept that I've struggled with all my life, actually, because as a performer, as someone who naturally is effusive and loves to share my voice and my thoughts, um, sometimes from a very young age, some people have been encouraging me, putting me in the spotlight, and other people have been saying, like, who do you think you are? Or, you're so arrogant. And that was really hard to hear as a child who loved to perform and very disheartening. Um, I think part of humility is knowing what you're good at and knowing what you're not. And it's okay to not be good at everything. In fact, it's really important. If everyone was good at everything, we wouldn't need each other. And we do need each other. Some people are very shy and never want to perform or speak in public or sing. 
but they really want to hear someone else do it beautifully. So if that's something that you love to do, you should do it for all those people that can't or won't or need to hear it. And also to inspire the, the next generation or whoever else wants to do it or is lacking the courage. So I say, close your eyes and your ears to the naysayers and, and do what you were born to do. You can find my music on all the social platforms, Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, martinkermusic.com, and I hope to sing for you in person sometime soon.